Hello everybody, it's Zach here from realestatelicensewizard.com. Today we have a special video planned. Today we have a post-exam interview with my good friend, Spencer. Spencer, say hi to everybody. Hey guys, what's going on? So today we're gonna be doing some uh, post-exam questions. Uh, we're gonna ask him what he kind of remembered and how his experience was with the exam. All right, so Spencer, go ahead and introduce yourself for those of you who don't really know who you are. You know, give them a little bit of your background and whatnot. Uh, so thanks for having me, Zach. Uh, my name is Spencer and I am a licensed real estate agent as of about four months ago. Um, so I went to school for design, switched to business, got into real estate. I uh, flipped a couple houses in college and so real estate was kind of uh, a natural next step. So uh, I started studying for the exam and I met Zach in college and it just so happened that he uh, had his business going and it was a great fit. And so I got my license and here I am four months later. <laughs> awesome. Great. So now that they know about you a little bit, um, let's get into these juicy questions. So first and foremost, did you take your test in person or online? I took it in, in person. Okay. Um, and did you like that? Did, would you recommend that for people? Yeah, it was, uh, it was basically like taking a test in college uh, for anybody that's sat through any kind of exam. We just went into the room with uh, five or 10 other people and sat down on a computer and took it. Uh, so it was, it was pretty smooth, pretty easy. Nice. Okay, cool. How long did you study for the exam specifically? Uh, well, that's a, <laughs> a little interesting. So I started my exam and then a few months into it, or I started studying pre-licensing courses mm -hmm. a few months into those. Um, I ended up moving and it was a huge move. So I took two to three months off and I had a lot of other stuff going on. So really it took about six months, but I'd say if I condensed it down into the amount of time I spent, it was probably an hour, a couple hours a day for maybe a month and a half, two months. So uh, would you recommend spending that much time again? Or do you think that oh like in the perfect scenario, you could have condensed it? Like, oh yeah. What was your thought process there? Yeah, I mean, I forgot a lot of information over the move. So uh, I probably did 40%, 50% of the class before the move and then took a three-month break and then finished the rest out. So I really had to review that. Um, if I had to do it again, I, I would probably cram it into a, a month. Um, okay. I don't know about uh, – so in Ohio, we have 120 hours of pre-licensing. Mm -hmm. So it's I think that's one of the highest in the United States. So – uh, it takes a little bit longer, but I've heard people doing it in two weeks to a month. And really that would have been uh, ideal because all that information just stays really fresh in your mind. Right, right. Now we're going to talk a little bit about pre-licensing later, but one question on that briefly. Um, how close do you think was pre-licensing in terms of uh, the exam? Like, do, do you feel like it was connected? Did, did you feel it was completely different? Um, what, what was your experience with that? What are your thoughts on that? So I went through Honduras College. It's a big uh, pre-licensing uh, tester in, I think it's just in Ohio. And uh, I thought their courses were, were pretty great. When I took the test, all the information that was on there uh, on the test was things that I had studied in the pre-licensing courses. They had little tests and exams and things like that. And um, so it did, it did give a, a good overview. I'd probably say it was about 80% of what was on the exam. So, I mean, if I've memorized every single word in pre-licensing courses, I probably could have done okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but that's what I filled in with real estate license wizard. So to give me that extra boost, but it was, it was okay. It was pretty accurate. I'd say about 80%. Cool. That's, that's nice to hear because uh, to be honest, we've heard mixed reviews with certain people. Um, and, and completing their pre-licensing and whether or not it fully prepares them. Some people say that, you know, they just grinded out their pre-licensing because they assumed that the exam was going to be, you know, similar or even easy, you know, easier. And then they go to it and they realize it's kind of different um, and they're not fully prepared. It's kind of like a wake, wake up call, you know, when they get to the yeah. exam, stuff like that. But yeah, I definitely wouldn't rely on it. hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so I guess what surprised you the most about the exam? Was there one thing in particular? Um, well, I thought the, everybody was telling me how hard it was going to be. And so I thought for the amount of studying that I put in, I thought it was, uh, it was a little difficult, but I didn't think it was too hard in Ohio, 
but probably the, the biggest thing was trickiness of the questions and how they were worded. And so um, I had heard that a couple times from other agents I talked to before. So I was aware of it and I was watching out for it. But a lot of the questions were kind of worded in a way that you didn't really know. There could have been two or three different answers to it. So I ended up reading through most of the questions two or three times. And uh, that kind of surprised me. Um, they were that sneaky about it. <laughs> yeah. Sneaky is a good word. <laughs> that's, that's, um, I think that's a, a good way to, to label the, the, you know, test creators. Um, cause they do sneak a lot of stuff on there. Um, especially with the vocabulary. Um, oh, yeah. but cool. So was there anything that you overstudied for the exam, like a particular, you know, topic or term or, you know, thing? Um, I think that probably the estates, leasehold estates and freehold estates and um, information about the transfers and uh, things like that. I really spent a lot of time on that and I probably didn't need to. There weren't as many questions on that as I thought there were going to be. And um, honestly, uh, there, some of the math, I spent a lot of time on the math and um, calculating acreages and things mm -hmm. like that. And uh, there wasn't a lot within that. But um, like I said, I spent six months doing it and I, I really didn't need to spend that much time. <laughs> so I probably overstudied for mm -hmm. a lot of things. In that. Yeah. Well, was there anything that you understudied? Uh, fair housing. <laughs> fair housing. <laughs> was probably, probably the most important thing that they like to talk about on the test was fair housing because uh, I think that's where most agents get in trouble. It's mm -hmm. kind of how not to get sued with fair housing. And so right. uh, that was one section I didn't spend too much time on and I was a little bit nervous on. And I think those were mostly the questions that I missed. Mm -hmm. Now, the fair housing part specifically, was that on mainly the national or did you notice there were some of that on the state as well? I think most of it was the national uh, because I think, the, I think there are a couple of fair housing laws uh, that are related to national and then there are a couple of state specific. And so that was really confusing, uh, right. going from the national to the state and yeah. what's what and who belongs where and things like that. Right. So primarily, yeah, that's what the way we teach it is obviously there's the federal fair housing. Um, and that's, that's primarily what you need to know, but obviously each state has their own additional fair housing laws, um, in terms of protected, um, you know, protected classes and things like that. Um, and, and that's kind of like the difference. But I was just personally curious in, in your instance, if you did see something in Ohio where it was like, you know, oh, that was, you know, a state specific question that kind of stumped me, or it was just mainly the national federal fair housing that, you know, you could have studied more. Um, was it just a combination of both or, you know, there were a national? few state ones. I'd, I'd say there were a couple and, um, but for me, I just kind of understudied the whole thing. But yeah, there were state questions that uh, were kind of confusing. And I think I put the answer for the national question when it was really mm -hmm. meant to be on the state level. And because yeah. I didn't know the state laws as well. Sneaky. Uh, <laughs> sneaky, yeah. Sneaky, right. Sneaky again. That's right. That's what we're going to label this video, sneaky. Because <laughs> it's, yeah, it's true. You're not the only person that has said that before. Um, we, we hear that like all the time. Um, so I guess another question, uh, when studying, did you get more out of flashcards, practice exams, videos? Like what was your go-to thing? Um, and you don't, obviously, you don't have to name names, but specifically like the type, like what did you like the best, what worked best for you? Probably the, the practice exams. Um, honestly, I just run into those over and over and over again. I've never really been a flashcard person mm -hmm. um, in college for tests. I never made flashcards. I couldn't remember any of it. <laughs> um, I could never remember the flashcards on the computer. So just running through the exam, and I think that helped a lot with the test anxiety too, because you're already doing it and it's kind of the same format. So Very true. Um, just taking, taking the exam and then looking at the questions I got wrong and then really kind of diving into those a little deeper. Yeah. I, and I, I think that's a good way to look at it. Um, a lot of people, um, they prefer one thing or another. We have a lot of people, we have a lot of commenters and you can comment down below <laughs> if you're one of those people, but they like to watch the videos or listen to the videos while they do something. Um, and that's their primary study tool. Uh, and, and they're like the, 
you know, aud auditory learners or um, whatever that's called. Um, but, but they like doing it that way. Other people, they like the practice exams, like in your instance, they just like doing it uh, that way they can get fully prepared. And then we hear so many people all the time with the flashcards as well. They're big into, um, you know, feeling like they, they yeah. like to touch the, the paper and, and read it and, and just have it everywhere. And so there's all certain different ways to study um, there. I, I wouldn't say that there's one that's 100% correct, but I would say that there's something that's close to that for you individually. So that's good that you found that. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you used um, that tool because like I said, it's, it's good if you can define that what worked for you. Um, do you remember any, while we're on the topic of flashcards, do you remember any vocab terms or terms that really stood out to you, uh, like definitions or something that you were like, oh God, is this like another language? Did you remember anything like that? Uh, I can't remember too specifically. I mean, appurtenances and things like that are still a little bit confusing. Yeah. Some of the terminology was uh, like leasehold and freehold and different kinds of estates. Uh, were kind of tricky because they all have, they all kind of apply to different people and mm -hmm. um, different situations. So that vocabulary was uh, kind of hard to get through. <laughs> uh, I've never been a great vocabulary person. I'm better at math than uh, English and vocabulary. So um, <clears throat> it was tough remembering specific definitions for words. Uh, but yeah, pertinences, that one never stuck <laughs> in my head for some yeah, reason. Yeah, that one's tricky. Uh, we have a video on that one. Um, that, that's funny because that's one of our most popular videos on really? like specific definitions was okay. Yeah. Pertinent and pertinences. Because, yeah. There were a few questions about that on the exam. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, what's funny is when, when I was doing research on the topic, um, there, there really wasn't like all the articles on it didn't make sense. And so I was like, this is ridiculous. That's why I, that was one of those videos where I was really excited to make because I can yeah. actually lay everything out and explain things and explain things. And if you go on like the comments, everyone's like, finally, like we found a video that explains yeah. it. And it's so true because like, they don't really lay it out there for you um, in pre-licensing or if, you know, on these online articles, it's, it's right. really not that simple. So um, yeah, if you Google it, you get, it seems like you get five different answers. Yeah. yeah. So that, that was my really biggest confusing. That's the biggest reason that we started this, um, actually, a little fun fact, was the fact that there was conflicting information online. That was the whole reason that we were like, okay, maybe we should sit down and build a centralized exam uh, platform where you can study and you know for a fact that all this information is correct and up to date. Because that was so frustrating to find something and then you'd be like, okay, this makes sense. And then you click on the next article just to make sure. And then it's completely different. And yeah. that happens all the time. Like I, I get so many people that comment and send us emails about the same issue. And, and that is like the whole reason that we're doing this is to kind of create a centralized uh, place to study. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, yeah. It's, it's funny <laughs> that you mentioned that because uh, you know, I would go on Google and, and Google things, but by the time you sort through all the information and find out what actually applies and to your state, mm -hmm. you end up spending so much time. It's not, it's really not worth it. And yeah. then you can't do that with all the material. And it's really just easier just having that central reference just to go back to uh, because the books, I mean, the stack of books is like <laughs> eight inches thick too. Yeah. And even looking through those is pretty rough because they include everything in there. So well, yeah. while you while you mentioned the books, I, I do I am curious personally with you. Did you have a book in particular that you know that you really enjoyed, or were you just kind of like, uh, this kind of just like, I didn't just read through it. any of them. Oh, really? <laughs> you didn't books. read any of the books? I didn't read through any of them. No. Wow. I mean, maybe it was just because my course just covered so much of the information in each mm -hmm. chapter, but I looked through the chapters and it looked like everything that was online, and then. Uh, you know, your, your course has reinforced all that. And so I didn't, I didn't even read my textbooks. Wow. That surprises me. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it surprises me a little bit, but it also doesn't surprise me at all because I have heard the same, you know, uh, thing before with certain people. Um, but wow, that's, that's yeah. interesting. Um, so I guess another question I had was, what do you think was harder, the state portion or the national portion? Because we hear a lot of people, um, say it's the national. We hear a lot of people say it's the state. Personally, what did you struggle with the most in terms of you know which one? I thought they were, I thought they were pretty similar. I'd say the state was a little trickier. 
they were both sneaky and tricky, but I'd say the <laughs> state one was a little sneakier with their words and definitions and things like that. Was there um, a particular reason why? It just like you said, was it just because of the wording so or language? Specific and specific terminology and, and questions uh, about laws. I mean, you go over all this national stuff and it's easier to remember kind of, for me, at least it's easier to remember the big picture. And then mm -hmm. the state is like pretty fairly detailed. So um, that was a little tougher for me, but I had another um, study resource that I was using and it kind of combined the state and the national together. And that was kind of frustrating because I didn't know what was state and what was national. So yeah. the exam is separated into two different mm -hmm. sections. So we've, uh, we've heard that many times before. Yeah. There's a lot of prep providers. I won't say names, but they do that. They just throw everything together and then they don't like, like the students or the studiers, they don't fully understand, Oh, this is what I need to expect when I'm on this portion. Now, yeah. granted there, are, there is actually a couple States that they do combined everything. Um, so that would make sense for those states. But in okay. most states, they separate. There's two specific sections. Um, you know, you have your state, you have your national, and you have to figure it out. Uh, and and I, I truthfully, I don't understand why so many uh, tools and providers do that because I do think it's confusing. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy you confusing. brought that up because um, yeah. that's something I forgot about. But yeah. Well, that's, that's interesting. That's a, that's a great answer there. So I, you mentioned math earlier, um, specifically how much math showed up on your exam? Could you give a particular number? Like how many questions? Uh, I think there were two or three. Two. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Which is unfortunate for me. Mm -hmm. I used to tutor, I'm, I'm kind of more math person, not English. I used to tutor math. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I had all the formulas and the numbers and I was ready to go. And there were two questions. Wow. So, it was kind of disappointing because I thought I had just, I had those in the bag, but uh, mm -hmm. nope. That's <laughs> so nuts. It wasn't That's a nuts. lot. Yeah. I was well, really shocked. Yeah. It's funny. It's funny. You mentioned that because I, I, I did a video on is, you know, how much math is on the exam and we've heard like random crazy numbers. And then we've had, had crrazy low numbers. Um, and, and that's, that's what I tell people is like, you never know what you're going to expect. And they yeah. also randomize it. That's the other thing too, is like the, you could take the exam and then you come back three months later and take it again. You could have more math questions. Okay. Um, so that's the tricky thing is with like a, a lot of these concepts is like, you should be prepared, but it, it also can be frustrating. Like from, from your perspective that you're like, Oh man, like I like math, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, but what was the, can I ask what kind of a range? I mean, mine was probably 2%. Is it, is it like 10%? Um, so from say? what we found, you could get anywhere from, from the resources that we have and the research that we've done anywhere from five to 15 okay. questions specifically. Okay. Wow. So yeah. it's a, it's a large range. And, and, yeah. and that's, that's the thing is like, um, like somebody in California actually commented on one of our videos the other day that they didn't get a single math question. Um, well, lucky them. Yeah. And we've, we've, we've had a few students say like, Oh my God, like we studied all this and we literally got one question or, or no, or no math questions. Um, and, and I think in part, it's just, it, it depends, it varies. Um, you know, and we had somebody who was really struggling with, um, math. Like they, they said that they just hate math and it's their bane of their, their existence, all this. And they said that they've failed twice and each time they had like 10 to 15 questions. Wow. So again, like it varies on, you know, the state varies on when you take it, um, things like that. But generally speaking, obviously um, it's best to just be prepared as possible. Like, you know, what you did. Um, but cool. Uh, so do you have any questions that completely stumped you? Uh, do you remember what the question was about? So obviously you mentioned the fair housing earlier. Um, was there a particular question? If you don't remember, it's no biggie, but I have to ask. Yeah, I could, I couldn't tell you. I mean, most of it was for fair housing. It was which act, uh, covers, which classes, uh, mm -hmm. which laws cover, which protected classes. Um, I know there were a couple of those in there and then there were, I know there were a couple questions on the exam. Uh, probably two or three that were just totally, I have no idea where they came from. I didn't cover anything like that in my material. Mm -hmm. uh, none of it was covered in your, it's just kind of out of nowhere. And I had no idea what the answers were. 
Really? Um, so I was kind of expecting maybe one or two to just be something I'd never heard of at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there were, I think there were a couple that were just, I had no idea. I don't even remember covering the material. So, mm. well, you know, what's funny is we had, I actually spoke to somebody, I'd say a couple months ago, and they, they said something similar about a question or two that, that, uh, that they were asked. And <laughs> the funny thing is, I don't, I, I don't believe this is the case in Hawaii, uh, not Hawaii, but um, Ohio. But um, in their instance, they, uh, their state, they do five questions that are all not graded, but they are to just determine, you know, the, the student's knowledge. So, that, so they throw in an extra five to 10 questions on their exam, just to see if students know it, and also to gauge if they could ask that question in the future, which okay. I thought that's pretty interesting. Um, and I, obviously that's probably not the case in, in your instance, but you know, I, when they were like, Oh my God, like we didn't study this. I was like, it's yeah. okay. Like they don't grade those ones. You know, there's certain questions that they do, um, that are like that. Okay. Um, but I believe in your instance, that wasn't the case, but, um, okay. So cool. So I did a poll on the channel actually, and asked what people struggled with the most studying wise. <laughs> Um, I thought this was a pretty interesting poll. So I did, there was four options. Um, okay. Procrastination was one. And that was actually overwhelmingly the number one answer at 60%. Yep. Uh, there was procrastination, bad prep materials, test anxiety, and other. Uh, so were you in the same boat? Was procrastination your number one thing you dealt with? Or was there something else? Oh, uh, yeah. How would you have voted that? Yep, that was it. <laughs> Most of it was procrastination. Yeah. Incons- probably inconsistency. Um, I mean, I've never really had test anxiety that bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and so after studying, I know uh, what I learned in college is if you focus and you put the work in, there's no reason to not be confident because you put the work in. Uh, right. A lot of people That's that have true. test anxiety are were kind of the students that didn't put the work in and kind of crammed last night. So mm-hmm. um, that wasn't an issue. But yeah, procrastination just after the end of the day, not wanting to sit down and just go through the material every yeah. day and not staying consistent with it. Mm-hmm. And that's where I really, at the end, the last month of my uh, pre-licensing courses and when I was studying for the exam, that was kind of uh, just putting a schedule down and cracking down, mm-hmm. doing it every single day, not procrastinating and not, um, not being inconsistent. And I think that's why I did so well, but yeah, that was tough. Yeah, well, it is it is hard because a lot of people that are studying their students in college or they have full time jobs. Um, so I can understand where procrastination would be like the number one. Because let's be honest, you know, you work an eight hour shift doing right. whatever you're doing. You come home like you don't want to study. Yeah. Um. And 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 that is very difficult. Um. You know, it's it's even difficult for for me sometimes. Uh. Just finding the motivation to do those certain things. Um. But yeah, I think I think for people that are struggling with that, my advice um, would be to just try and set a schedule for yourself. Um, That way, you know, you know, for a fact, okay, when I come home on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm going to study or, you know, Wednesdays, or maybe you just dedicate a day or or, or whatever it might be. That would be my recommendation um, for people that are like that. Um, So another question, did you enjoy your pre-licensing? So you touched a little bit about uh, that, but would you recommend doing it online? like you did or or do you think that you would have had better experience in person what, what was your thoughts on that i definitely do it online i yeah. i hate i i don't like online classes i've never been an online class person but doing it online i had 120 hours there's no way i would have sat through classes for 120 hours uh, or whatever they are or whatever they cover <laughs> um and it was really convenient just being able to pull it up even on my phone i could pull it up and read through the material uh, and the general real estate was really interesting. Uh, my first section was kind of an overview. Mm-hmm. And then it got into the law, which was, for me, that was um, not so fun. <laughs> um, but it wasn't it wasn't bad. Yeah, I really enjoyed the online. And we had videos and uh, speakers and, and things like that to go over the material, too. So, yeah, it was great. That's cool. That's good. That's good to hear. So, so then you you would recommend you said who'd you do your pre-licensing with honduras uh, yeah hondro i think it's honduras or, or honduras you yeah, recommend I'm a, i think they're only based in ohio oh okay um, well for ohio people you would recommend yeah. that then yeah that was great i think that's that's pretty much everybody uses here so 
Sweet. Um, so what, another question about pre-licensing while we're on the topic, how long specifically did it take for you to complete your pre-licensing? Um, so you kind of answered that already, but you know, like in those hours that they gave you, um, did you feel like you could have, you know, squeeze that in more? Or do you think that it was just the right amount of time? What, what's your thoughts on that? I probably could have read through the information faster and done more of a skim. I pretty much read and paid attention to all of it because um, I didn't want to have to take the test four and five <laughs> times. Right. So, but it did, doing that, it did take me the full 120 hours. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you crammed it all into eight hour days, you could get it done in a couple of weeks, but um, I read a little bit slower probably could have done it in, in hundred, maybe 80 hours if you read through it fairly quickly and skimmed. But uh, yeah, it took me the full 120. Cool. Sweet. Um, and then I guess there's one or two more questions I have. Um, so do you feel like your pre-licensing, I, I kind of asked this again earlier, but do you think that it completely prepared you for the state exam where you were, so you mentioned that 80% number. Yeah. Um, do, do you think that if you were to do it again, you would have, you know, looked at other prep providers or do you think, Oh yeah. You know, you, yeah, you definitely. Would, yeah. I, I mean, see. there's, there's a lot of information. If you've memorized all of it, I'm sure you could be fine, mm -hmm. but uh, there's no way I could memorize all that. And so just having it, the prep provider that, you know, targets towards the exam and kind of mm -hmm. cuts out all the other stuff that's not, can be the on there? Yeah, the fluff. There's a, <laughs> right. there's a lot of fluff. So, right. uh, yeah, I I would never do it without having uh, a, a test provider. Cool. Um, yeah. Sweet. Nice. So, uh, and then I guess one last question. So then, if there's one thing you would recommend, or one piece of advice you would give people studying for their exam, what would it be? Well, there's a. I mean, there's a few, but most. I guess the main one would probably be consistency just putting it on your schedule, even if it's 30 and 45 minutes a day for a month, you should be fine. And I find the best time of day to do that. If it's in the morning before you go to work or as soon as you get home, just don't put it off till 10 o'clock at night. It's never fun. So you're a morning, you're a morning person. Then. I am not a morning person. No. But if I can get it in and get it done when I'm like awake and wow. motivated, um, yeah, that was a lot better. So just staying consistent with that, putting it on the calendar every day. Um, and just putting the time in. That's um, that's great advice. That's funny. I have a feeling a lot of people are going to comment that they disagree with that, though. <laughs> uh -oh. They like their late night study sessions. At least oh, that's, yeah. that's what I've heard before. But okay. hey, I, that's still great advice. I mean, if you can get up and study like that before you have to do, I think that's fantastic. And I think that obviously it worked for you. You passed your first time. You're successful. You've you, you know you've accomplished all these things. So. That's really, really great to hear. Um, all right, well, cool. Do you have any other last remarks or questions, you know, answers to, you know, any, you want to spill the beans on any other juicy <laughs> questions or answers? On not the not or, too much. You know? I mean, it was uh, just don't, don't be nervous, be confident, put the time in, put the work in, uh, go through real estate license wizard. That was a great <laughs> prep, <laughs> prep course. Um, it really covered uh, everything. I mean, there was nothing within real estate license wizard, the course, there was nothing in there that was not on the exam. That's um, good to hear. Thank you. Yeah. So it was, this is it not was an great. ad. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, is... No, it's not an ad. And I yeah. used other, uh, we'll just, I used another test prep as well and they were good and I liked their format, but they had a few gaps. So I, it was nice. It was nice to fill it in. Well, with, um, thank you. Good, we so, appreciate yeah. we appreciate the feedback and we appreciate you saying that. Awesome. Great. Well, then I guess we're going to wrap this up. Um, for those of you guys who tuned in the entire time, I really appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you guys are into this kind of stuff. Uh, obviously, give Spencer, you know, the applause that he deserves down below, comments, all that stuff. Um, I know that this can be a little tricky for a lot of people to do. Um, but yeah, all right, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, Zach from realestatelicensewizard.com. I'll see you guys next time.